If you're using the ART renderer, or really, theoretically, any physically based renderer going forward, then you want to take a good look at the physical material. It's going to give you the ability to reproduce natural materials in the real world. And it's, again, based upon physical parameters rather than the standard material, which is based upon abstract computer graphic parameters. And they both serve their purpose. The physical material is going to be a lot more realistic, but it's going to be slower to render. Just keep that in mind. I'll open up the material editor with the M key on the keyboard. And let's create a new physical material. And it'll be found in the material map browser under materials, general. And again, the idea here is that that physical material is supposed to be renderer agnostic. And that means it should work with any renderer. Let's bring that over and put that into the view here and double click on it in order to expose its parameters. Also double click on the swatch and that'll make it larger. If you want, you can open up a preview window just to make it even bigger. You can right click on that swatch and choose open preview window. And then you've got the ability to resize that and really see a clear preview of what it's gonna look like. Now I said that the physical material is supposed to be renderer agnostic, but it really depends upon the vintage of the renderer. If we try to look at this with the scanline renderer, it's going to look completely different. It's important that when you're editing materials that your currently active renderer is the one that you're going to finally use in production. If I go over here and open up my render setup, and my current renderer is Art Renderer, or ART, it looks like it should. If I switch this over to Scanline, it now looks completely different. Okay, so the idea, again, is the physical material is supposed to be renderer agnostic, but in the real world, it doesn't actually work that way, and you need to absolutely be certain that while you're editing materials, you have the appropriate renderer selected. Go back to ART. Let that refresh. All right, so what are the parameters here? We've got two modes actually to the physical material. Up here, there's a pull down list that says standard and advanced. I don't actually recommend using the standard material mode because very important parameters are actually not exposed in standard mode. The idea of the physical material is to save you time by setting certain parameters behind the scenes and only exposing ones that the Autodesk developers think that we would need to adjust. One of those parameters that's hidden is in fact the amount of reflections. The idea here is that we can control the amount of reflection by adjusting this single slider, this single spinner here, which is the overall roughness of the surface. If I bring that roughness up to let's say 0.5, then we can see we still get a highlight, but it's more spread out. If I bring that roughness all the way up to its maximum of one, then at that point we have an ideal diffuse material that has no highlights. And that sounds like a good idea, but in reality, we do need to adjust the amount of highlights or the intensity of reflections. And to do that, we want to go into advanced mode up here, material mode, advanced. And now when I do that, we see there's a new section that's labeled reflections. We've got a reflection amount, a reflection color, and also we have a roughness parameter here. And notice that it has a value of one. Notice also there's another roughness parameter here that has a value of zero. When we're in the standard mode, then this roughness parameter here is actually the roughness of reflections. And when we switch over to advanced mode, that roughness moves down into here, into the reflection section. And now we have a secondary roughness, which is the roughness of the diffuse surface. And it doesn't have a lot of influence over the effect here. We can turn this up to its maximum of one, and we see that that changes here. We've got kind of almost like a terracotta effect, but the reflection roughness is a lot more powerful if I bring that down to zero, for example, we're going to get these very bright pointy highlights. All right, so I wanna do a leather material here. And to accomplish that, I wanna have a roughness for the highlights of about 
Additionally, a roughness for the diffuse component, also about 0.3. And then we have the overall amount of reflections. And when we're in advanced mode, we can actually drop that down. Let's give that a value of 0.3 as well. And in order to see the reflections better, we can enable a background in the slot here. We have to do it here. We can right click over here and we want to show the background in the preview and we'll see a checker there. And that will allow us to see actual reflections in that surface. And that means if we had a roughness here of zero, we would start to see some mirror reflections there if we had a high reflection amount. Okay, so that's really kind of icing on the cake. I'm gonna bring this down to 0.3, bring the reflection roughness down to 0.3 as well. And then finally, there's this obscure parameter here that is actually really very important. It's the index of refraction. It's the amount of light bending as it travels through a surface. Well, it also controls the angle of reflections. And that's a physical parameter. It has to do with the density of some matter. Okay, so glass has an index of refraction of 1.5. And if you have leaded glass, it's a little bit denser. It's like 1.7. Water is 1.3 and air is just one. This IOR parameter is really most important when you're dealing with refractions or light bending through a transparent object. It also influences the reflectivity. And you can actually put this into sort of non-physical or crazy values if you want to get certain looks. And that's just an indicator that the physical material starts out with the assumption of being physical, but we do have the ability to achieve impressionistic or non-physical effects. I can set that index of refraction up to a value of five, and that's going to change the intensity of highlights. Basically what it's going to do is make the object more reflective regardless of whether a polygon is facing towards the camera or at right angles to the camera, like these ones on the edge. All right, having adjusted all of those parameters, I can assign that material. Let's go up here and we'll call it leather. We'll give it a base color of maybe a dark brown and we can assign it to our sofa. Once again, clicking and holding on this little circle, drag over to that sofa. And in this case, we only got one object out of our group. That was a little bit unexpected. It's probably a property of the physical material itself. But if we wanted to, we could go ahead and select all of those again and, and assign them one at a time if necessary. But the basic idea here is that the physical material is not actually 100% physical in the real world. In other words, you want to tweak it out in order to get a certain look. You have the ability to be physically accurate, but you also have the ability to be physically inaccurate or artistically impressionistic or to achieve a certain look. Cool, so that is a little bit about the physical material. It works best with the ART renderer. And in the renderings I do for this course, all of the materials are actually physical materials and I do all the renderings in ART to get the full advantage of that physical material. All right, that's a good introduction to the basics of the physical material.